Jared Poland froknowsphoto.com. I'm here with Fred Dinglehoff. Fred, how are you today? I'm fine. So we got where where are you in the world? I'm in the Netherlands. Fred is in the Netherlands and Fred is a reader of the site, though I don't know how well he actually can see the words being that Fred is a blind photographer. They do exist, right Fred? Right. So we're going to take a look at some of Fred's work in a minute. Let me turn off Twitter real quick so it doesn't distract us. Uh, and it's just pretty fascinating. Fred wrote me a whole long email about the backstory of, of his site, and you can read that over on the website. But real quick, do you want to run through how – I mean, you've been blind your whole life, correct? No. No. I went um, – when I was born in 1969, I had a tumor in my right eye. And everything was okay until my 21st birthday. And then I had some troubles in my left eye. And after nine months of uh, hospital, they discovered that there was a kind of tumor in the optical nerve in my uh, left eye. And they discovered it too late. So the damage was already done. Right. And I can only see light and dark right now. So you... you you were able to see until you were 21 years old? Yes, 100%. Wow. So, I mean, as I am not blind, but I have had eye conditions, and I was born that way, you know, almost an al- it was ocular albinism, and uh, they had to cut the muscles in my eyes because of my nystagmus and stuff. So we've always been concerned about my eyes, but what – I'll just flat out ask the hard-hitting questions. Um, how did you handle – going from being able to see to not being able to see? Uh, in the beginning, it was pretty hard, like falling in a, in a dark pit. But after some uh, time to reflect and go into this rehabilitation center in the Netherlands, I quickly decided that I don't want to be like the other blind people in that center over there um, because I want to live and enjoy life and not sit behind geraniums. Hmm. So then, where did the love for photography come from? One time I was on holiday with some people and this guy told me that he felt sorry for me because I was not able to shoot photos. And that is always a trigger for me when people say I cannot do things. I try it and I'll test it and to see if they are wrong. And most of the time they are wrong. And so I went to the shop over there and bought this throwaway camera, starting shooting. And we went back to this shop where they could develop the photographs uh, within an hour. And the guy who told me that I couldn't do that, he flipped through the pages, uh, through, the, through the photographs, and he uh, made a bundle on his right side and a bundle on the left side. And most of the pictures went to the right side. And every time he put one photo on the left side, he made a a noise. So I thought, well, okay, that's it. No photography for me. Mm. But when he was done, he said, damn, almost 31 photographs are in perfect focus. Uh, The framing is good. Everything is all right. Only six were wrong. Right. So, I mean, you now have a digital SLR. You, you, picked, right. you picked one up and, and you made the guys over at the, uh, the camera store help you out, take some classes or teach you some classes. M- my thing is, we're going to look at photos in a minute, but how do you get the composition and framing down? Is it just seeing the shapes? Is it, what is it? Uh, when shooting uh, landscapes, it's, it's hard because there's no sound. And I need always somebody around me to telling, uh, telling me what there is to see but with people and, and animals it's it's pretty easy because they all do make sounds and it's just it's just a feeling just uh, working on the on the sounds and and uh, imaging in my head mm. where I want to focus so right and so you use autofocus uh, yes and you, you, I guess it's left on like the center point or what camera is it that you're using? I think it's called in the US the T5i. Okay. So, yeah, you use the focus modes there. You have the autofocus. 
And do you have the focus beep on so that when it's in focus, you hear the beep? Yes. All right. I mean, that's got to be very helpful. Very. So when, the, when, say, you have a daughter, right? Yes. When she's running around, can you see her moving through no. the frame? No. 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 So you don't. I, okay, so the light and dark that you see, do, you, but you don't really see the shapes. It doesn't help me. Uh huh. It's just the 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 sound. Wow. So that's it is shooting. And, uh, it is shooting and, 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 the, and, the, and the feeling for the for the camera and and trying to image in my head what she is doing and where I want to have the focus. Right. Now, when it comes to settings, how are you handling your exposure settings? There's always uh, somebody with me telling me uh, what the settings are. And I am trying to learn the, the camera by heart. So you're, so, visu you're visualizing. I mean, that's what you said. You, you picked up my DVD and you were able to, you said that I painted pictures in your head, basically. Right. Yes. That's, that's very important to hear that. Like, for me, that's, that's amazing that that I am able to teach in a way that a blind person can see the pictures in their mind. Well, the sound is now. The sound cut out? Yeah, yeah you're back. Okay. I was just saying that it was pretty amazing that you, uh, you, you the way, when you told me that the way that I taught, you saw pictures in your mind, it just really was really cool. Yes, but it is. For instance, that little piece about uh, imagining the world uh, through this uh, photo frame. Yeah. That really helped. And it is just, just a, a, a little bit, but everything you say, you keep on talking, luckily for me. Hmm. But in that way, I can uh, understand what you are trying to uh, say with your pictures. Right. That's, that's awesome. I mean, we're going to take a look at some of the shots right here from the playground, if that's okay. Yes. So you, um, if I tell you which number I'm on, will you be able to know? Which no. One? No? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess, so you don't see these images. You don't, you, you don't get to see any of them, obviously. No, no. But like I, like I wrote you, um, people ask me sometimes, well, it's no fun if you can't see the photos afterwards. But when they describe the photos to me, I am back on that same spot on the same day. So I can recall what, what was happening over there. Well, the, the one picture that jumps out to me that is framed very well, uh, I mean, there's a bunch that I, I want to start with one that uh, it's your daughter. She's got her two hands. One's on a, a, a red angle. One's on a blue uh, piece of metal. It's like she's pushing something and it's shooting through the jungle gym. Okay. This is so interesting because I have to figure out how to describe the image to you to make to, to, to paint the picture in your head. She's off to the side a little bit, rule of thirds. Uh, she's not directly in the middle. And it's just it's really amazing that you were able to focus in on just her. And mm -hmm. the jungle gym itself is out of focus and the background's blurred out. And it's just one of those moments that's captured extremely well. Okay. So that, that's I wish you could see it. And I'm sure you do as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then there's a, I guess I'll assume that, is this your wife? I think that is the, um, the mother of the little friend of my daughter. Oh, okay. So that's framed really well, being able to, 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 the ability to be able to fill the frame and not be able to see what the frame is, is great. And then understanding that when they're on a swing, to be able to anticipate where to take the photo is, is pretty amazing. Because I'm looking at that right now with one of the girls with her hand up in the air and her other hand is on the uh, the chain. And you, yeah. can, you can see that the swing is moving because there is some motion there. Um, that's just, it's just really amazing. And then one of the girls with a, uh, a juice box and you know, the, the framing and the composition is, is amazing. And for anybody out there that's had, that complains about their images, that can look at your stuff and go, this guy doesn't even see anything, yet he's able to get images that are composed properly and in focus. Okay. That's amazing. Well, thank you. And what, what, what do you want to tell people that, that, I mean, I mean, what would you tell people about the way that you shoot photos and just like some kind of inspirational words that you may have? Well, I, I think that photography is, is all about uh, uh, picturing the, 
the moment. And um, like I told you before in, in my email, I came to the conclusion that seeing is, is not done by, by the eyes, but, but with the heart. And I, when I go out with my daughter to the playground and want to picture her, um, I want to, f the, to capture the, the moment and the feeling of, of that moment. And I think that is what photography is all about, framing a moment in, in, in time. Huh. That's great. So what is, um, where do you want to take your photography next? First, I have to uh, get out of focus, uh, out of uh, auto. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing that right now uh, since, uh, since I saw your stuff on uh, YouTube. And after that, I don't know. See, that's, that's interesting. I guess now we have to find a way that you can associate the F numbers, you know, 2.8 and 22, to determine how you're able to blow the background out and how that, you know, 2.8 is going to give you a much shallower depth of field. So mm -hmm. it's going to separate the person from the background, but it's also going to let in more light. So it's switching off into manual is going to be, you definitely need a handler. You need somebody standing right there to, to help paint a little bit of a picture in your mind to allow you to visually see the setting. How bright is it? How much light is there? You know, and, and is there, a, is there a cloud or is there a background? Are there distractions? So I guess it's, it's kind of like, like, a, it's kind of like a game show, really. You know, I'm thinking of game shows and it's just like, you've got to go take a picture of this scene. You've got to guess the exposure by mm -hmm. asking the right questions. You have to get the composition by listening to your subject. That's, mad challenging i can imagine well maybe there's a challenge in the in the um, makers of the of the cameras to uh, put in a little speech device yeah so that the camera tells me what kind of light it is outside that would be interesting it could tell you the the light meter readings and right and i'm sure you said you, you that the apple products have been really helpful because they all talk to you yeah Maybe there's an app that somebody can create that does something similar, though you want to use it in a, in a digital SLR. Well, that, that would be great. <clears throat> wow. It's, Fred, it's, it's, it's really fascinating to hear about how you shoot these photos. Okay. And to see the results is even more fascinating when, when you get to the realization that you can't see anything. Right. So I think that, that the challenge should be me to, I'm going to put on a blindfold and I'm going to have to, well, you could see some light though, light and dark, right. but that doesn't, that doesn't help when shooting the photos. Not when shooting photos, no. So. Because I have learned in this, uh, in the shop where I went with my dog and my cane to buy a camera and they told me how to hold the, the camera and I'm always looking through the viewfinder, hmm. but it is so small that there, there's no light coming through it. Mm. So it's, it's, it's absolutely shooting blind. Right. But I guess it, when you put it up to the viewfinder, it makes you feel like you're part of the camera and you're visualizing right. it in your head. So you're still going through the same process that you would have gone through if you were able to see through it. So that's Correct. definitely something I'm going to try out. We'll probably do like a five minute portrait of a subject on a swing set or in a park and I'm going to do it blind. Okay. And we'll see how we see how we, and okay. When it comes to editing the photos, is somebody editing the raw files for you? Yes. My wife is doing that. Very cool. And yeah. that's, that's great. I mean, she's doing a great job. The photos look very good, but these files were not edited. Huh? Uh, what are they? JPEGs? Mm, yes, I think so. Uh Oh, I'll let you slide on that one. All right. Um, yeah. Any, anything else you want to say to people out there before we uh, call today? No, it's just who I am. And I want to shoot photos like everybody else. And, and, and um, being blind doesn't stop me from, from achieving goals like this. That's amazing, Fred. Congratulations on the perseverance to just keep going. Thank you. All right, guys. And, that's, and you also keep up the good work. I, I will try. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So, guys, that, there's not much else to say other than a blind photographer 
the he exists. He captures images. He does a great job. And uh, think about it when you go out there and shoot next time. Try closing your eyes and trying to take a picture of, of a scene that's in front of you when you can't see it. And let's see how well we do uh, when we're faced with that situation. So that's it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.